Hello, and welcome to another great, amazing book show. Today's story... Today, we're going to look at a book from the non-fiction section of the library. This is called Rare Breeds, Endangered Farm Animals in Photographs. This is the kind of book I would have looked at when I was a little kid. I would go around the big section of the library where it's not just kids' books. See, this book is an animal book. This is going to be all farm animals. And we have a white chicken over here. This is a rooster. And he's got the big comb. That's called a comb. The mohawk that's on a chicken's head. And then this is called a waddle. That's his waddle, and that's his comb. And I think that's a boy chicken, but it could be a hen, I guess. I just, I, usually when you see a big comb, it's a rooster. Because <clears throat> they gotta impress the hens. There's a cow, or a steer, or a bull. Um, pigs! We have the pig section. Aren't pigs interesting? Look, he's got a nose ring. The Tamworth pig. See, it says Tamworth here. That's a Tamworth. This pig is a Tamworth. And then the British lop. This is a lop-eared, like with rabbits. It's called lop-eared when their ears don't go up like this. They go, they go down into the sides. That's a lop ear. Look at those piglets! Piglets are fun. But that's the big mama pig. See? And those are her babies. And they're squealing. Maybe they see something. Probably it's the farmer. I wonder how you say that. Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. Old spots. The native pig of Gloucestershire. I can't. I can't read it. You just gotta say it. It was at one time known as the orchard pig because it was used to scavenge windfall apples. Apples that fall off a tree. These pigs go out and they eat the apples. That's what it says right here. You can read the captions to find out what the picture is about. Look at that ugly pig! Whoa! He's got a tooth coming out sideways? That's a tusk. Pigs have tusks. That's why they can hurt you when they bite you. The point is to not get bit. The Mangalitsa pig is a most unusual animal. It grows a hairy fleece akin to that of sheep. These are benthamers. Benthi Bentheimers? I don't I, There's so many I can't... I don't know how you say them. A British saddleback. And this is a Berkshire. A rubbed... Anyway, lots of names. Let's look at some pictures, I guess. There's that nose ring again. I wonder what they do with that nose ring. Chambra Regina de Emilia Pyrenees in uh, Thule. I cannot read French. Wow. Um, this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. That's not a little piggy. That's a huge piggy. That pig, it's giant. That is a big old pig. What would you do if you had a pig that size? Would you ride it? Look how short his nose is. Most pigs have a longer nose than that. I don't know if any pig really has a long nose, but that is a very short nose. This is a middle white. Cattle! Cattle is another word for cow. Beef short horn. Those are very short horns. Look how short those horns are. There's no horn. It says in the caption here, uh, beef shorthorn. Shorthorn cattle are all descended from the, the Collings brothers Tees who Water farmed Group. in Teesdale in the last quarter of the cent. More facts and stuff and nothing about how interesting they are. Look at how much milk is in the back end of this cow. Wow. You can make some cheese out of that. You milk a cow and then you take the milk and you separate out the cream. And you can make whipped cream and ice cream. And then you can make milkshakes with the milk and the cream that you make into ice cream. And then you can take the cream and you can make butter and you can make butter milk. And then you can also take the cream and you can make cheese and cream cheese and sour cream. And wow, there's a lot of stuff you can make out of milk. Do you like dairy? Dairy is what you call milk products or it's a place where you buy milk. When I was a kid, we would go to this dairy that was up the road. There was a big, big pasture, and it would take a long time to drive around. But over on the front end of it was uh, a, uh, 
Anyway, a little drive through area where the road went through and you'd lower your window and you'd say, I like to buy two gallons of milk. And you'd give them your money and they'd run over there and they'd grab some milk out of the refrigerator and bring it to you. And the milk was all fresh. And it's not a dairy anymore. But when I was a kid, it was a dairy. And it was always fun to go there because they also sold ice cream and sometimes grandma would buy us some ice cream. Look, that's a cow person wearing a cow coat. That's for rain. When it really rains, you wear a coat like that. These are some dark pictures. They need more light. I mean, it's a black cow. Why don't you put a light right there instead of over there? You're aiming the light wrong. You can't see the cow. Whoa, a furry cow. He's a little young one. Uh, Belted Galloway. Animals which live in exposed areas of regions of a harsh climate develop a long, thick, protective coat. And I guess that's a mama belted Galloway. Maybe. Whoa! Look at that big bull! Oh, bulls are cool. They're big and they're strong, and if you tie a rope around them and grab on and hold on, then you can go in a rodeo. <laughs> And if you ride them for eight seconds and do a really good job, they'll give you a medal. Or a belt buckle. Or a bunch of money. Or probably all three. But yeah, he doesn't look like he's going to ride him. He looks like he's going to try and make sure the bull stays calm and is nice. But yeah, you got to have bulls if you're going to make more cows. Bulls and cows. The bull is the daddy and the cow is the mommy. Hey look! A highland! These are so fun. I love that long reddish hair, don't you? Don't you think that's a neat looking cow? Looks like it came out of the ice age, like a woolly mammoth or something. Do you know what a mastodon is? A mastodon or a woolly mammoth? Here's some pictures of those. Um, yeah, during the ice age, animals had fur like this. This is a highland, this is not extinct. Mastodons and woolly mammoths aren't around anymore. They're like dinosaurs, they're gone. But these guys are still around. They might have made these recently, though. It says Highland or Keel uh, cattle. Their alternative name is derived from the practice of droving the animal from west the Western Isles to the mainland of Scotland by swimming them over the Straits of Kyle, uh, separating the areas of land. They swim them? That's cool! Wow! When you herd these cowboys, they'll, they'll herd cattle, you know. They chase them, and they send them around, but those things swim. Wow, that is a really pretty cow, too. That's the mama cow, and that's the calf. Look at that cow! Horns come forward to meet ya! That's the longhorn. When a breed is endangered, it must be promoted. Bolin Jill Four is a frequent visitor to the show. Also vitally important, and modern technology can be of assistance. That is not interesting, is it? There's another longhorn cow. Look how pretty it is. I really like that. That is a neat looking cow. If I could have a cow like that, I would get one of those. Longhorns, these are also longhorns, but look at those neat horns. Look how they twist and come forward. You know, a baby cow, when a, when a cow is born, you know how, like, if you have baby sisters or baby brothers, it takes a long time for kids to grow up. But cows, when they're born, they jump up on their feet and they start walking. Maybe it's easier with four feet, but... Yeah, they, they start walking and because they, they got to be able to get up to their, their mama's udder and get milk. And so they stand up right out there in the field. Those are really neat horns, aren't they? You have to be careful if you were riding on this cow's back. Boy, those, I mean, if, if the cow turned its head to this way or that, you'd get poked by those horns and probably fall right off. I guess that's why we don't ride cows. We ride horses because they don't have horns. Look at those furry... Like, they got curly fur on their faces. That's kind of neat. Oh, we're on to sheep and goats. Look at that. Sheep and goats. You know what's so cool about them? Goats have square pupils. Did you know that? Look at their eyes. In all of these pictures, goats don't have round pupils like you do. They're rectangular. Look how mean that guy. He's like, I got my sheep. I got two of them. How many sheep you have? <laughs> It's a good pose. Those are show sheep. Look how pretty they are. They've got black little legs, and then they've got furry, furry backs, 
and you take a you take clippers like you get a haircut with and you cut their hair and then you can make a sweater out of their fur and they'll grow more it doesn't hurt them at all they like a they like to get a haircut i think because it probably feels good like when you get a haircut this little one's called a Baldwin, or his name is Baldwin. i'm not sure look at those horns he's about to grow his horns into his eye would you like to have a sheep like that imagine walking a sheep like that around your neighborhood say this is my pet sheep Look at those rectangular pupils. Do you think they see different? I wonder what they see when they see. You know, their horns are shaped like this. Do you know why? Um, it's because they like to butt heads. They like to slam into each other. So they put their head down, and this whole part is very flat. And then the horns curl back and get out of the way. But they're very, very thick. So they can slam into their heads and not hurt their heads. If you do that, though, it will really hurt. Don't slam your head into anybody else, because it will really oh. hurt your head. Because you're not a sheep. But sheep love to. Wow, that is a really thick sheep. Look at that thick, thick fleece. The f It's not fur, it's called wool. Um, and it's kind of got an oil to it called lanolin. And you can use lanolin to help when you get chapped, uh, like, knuckles. It can help your hands to get softer. Yeah, there's just so many useful things about sheep. Look at this ram. He's got yellow horns. That guy's talking to him, I think. He says, you're a good ram. Let me let me just get you to stand here so we can take a picture of you quickly. Don't worry. Don't No, don't, ba don't butt my head. Ow! Look, that's like a shaggy dog sheep. Do you know why sheep dogs look like sheep dogs? <laughs> So they'll look like sheep. That sheep looks like the sheep dog. Maybe it is. No, he's got hoofs. See? So he must be a sheep. And this guy, he got a red ribbon for, for showing this beautiful sheep. It's called a gray face Dartmoor. Most long wool breeds in Britain, that's England, uh, most long wool breeds were influenced to some degree by the Dishley Leicester. Leicester? Uh, boy, oh boy, I can't pronounce anything from England. Anyway, this two sheer twin ram has the coarse wavy wool and powerful head and neck typical of the breed. His owner, Mr. J.W. Mead, carries a typical shepherd's crook. That's a shepherd's crook, not a walking cane. Although he probably does both. Uh, but that shepherd's crook is so he can tell the sheep like, Oh, don't go that way, go this way. That's called a Wensleydale. It's also got long curly hair. It's even curlier though. Some kind, sometimes there's kids with curly hair like this. Wow, look at that. That's the sheep from the front of the cover. Yep, it's got his tongue out. Look at that. I wonder if they pant like a dog when they get hot. It looks like it would be hot wearing a coat like that. Look, his owner is furry too. <laughs> this guy doesn't have a beard though. He's holding on to him though. This is the poise that you want your sheep to have when you go to a sheep show. You want your sheep to stand regally like a statue. And they take the fleece um, and they'll dye it all kinds of different colors because maybe you don't want a white or a black sweater. But what if you could have that brown sweater? Wouldn't that be a neat sweater to have? I would love to have just a natural brown sweater from that sheep. Maybe not. Maybe people would be like, you look like a tree or something. You're the same color as tree bark. Hey, look! Half of that tr half of that goat is white and half is black. The Schwarzwall, or Schwarzwall, I can't say it. I cannot say the word. Oh, well, anyway. Wow. That is a neat looking goat. Wow! Look at that hairstyle! Except it's not hair, it's horns! That is a neat look. That looks like out of a Dr. Seuss book. Look, that one's got twisty horns too. What if you could have a sheep like that? You could put an ice cream cone on each one. You could put ice cream all over the... That would be sticky, I bet. Golden Guernseys are a dairy breed, and where, th where they are kept in groups indoors, it is safer for them to not have horns as they can inflict severe damage on each other. Ow. They can stab each other with their horns, so they cut their horns. But a golden Guernsey, they're a milk goat. You wouldn't milk him because he's a boy goat, but a girl goat, 
you could milk her, and then make goat cheese. This is also a boy goat. We're to the horses. Do you like horses? I don't know why I like horses so much. I think it's that you can ride them, but I've also met some horses in my life, and I always liked them. You know how with dogs, to make a friend with a dog, you just give them treats. If you give them treats that they really like, they'll just like you so much, they'll be your family. Uh, but with a horse, horses care more about being friends with you uh, and trusting you than they do about getting treats. They say that a horse needs to know that it's safe with you. They're such big animals, you would think that they wouldn't be afraid of much, and some of them aren't. Some of them can be very powerful, and they'll kick your head in. But, you know, uh, a big horse wants to have a herd, and they need to stay in a group to stay safe. So when you want to train a horse, you teach the horse that you're its friend, and that it can trust you. You really got to take care of them. Wow! Look at that donkey! Enjoys close communication with its handler. This guy's wearing a French, that's a, a French kind of jacket to wear. I wonder if he's really short or if it's just a really big donkey. I wonder how tall that donkey is. Oh, that's the end of horses already? Oh. Did you know that the word poultry means chickens? Have you ever heard that word, poultry? What a weird word, huh? Poultry. Well, chickens. Here we go. It's sort of laying over. It's a comb over. A silver dorking? Oh, that's from the other page. No, that is. This is a silver dorking. That one's called a Derbyshire red cap. And the other one's a Norfolk gray. See, chickens don't have ear lobes. Like, if you grab the side of your head, you've got an ear. Uh, but you can see where the, the tympanic lobe is what it's called. I think, pretty sure. Uh, on a chicken, they don't have ears that stick out like you and me, but they do have ears and they can hear. Right through that area is where they hear from. This one's called a Jubilee Indian Game Hen, and it's got really thick legs. I bet it's a pretty big chicken. Looks like a heavy chicken. Wow, that one is too. Look how big those feet are. Nope, not a giant chicken, a tiny chicken with normal, almost normal sized feet. It's a black crowed Langshan. Langshan? That is a pretty rooster, don't you think? He's all black, but I really do like him. I think he's a neat looking bird. Roosters are kind of funny. Sometimes they're nice, and sometimes they are the meanest thing on Earth. They're the closest thing to dinosaurs. Like, if you think of a Tyrannosaurus Rex walking around the jungle and snapping and growling and chasing things, uh, yeah, we had a rooster, and he was a real nice rooster for a while, and then he grew up, and he became the meanest, most tyrannical lizard-type dinosaur. He was like this one, only kind of, it, we'll probably see one that's like him. Uh, he was brown, he had like brown up here and green on his, green on his wing, he was really pretty, but boy, yeah, that's what he looked like, except his comb went straight up, not like this one, where it's going all over. And he was so mean, he would bite you. He would draw blood. He was like a monster. Yeah. Roosters, man. Chickens. And that's where we get eggs, is from chickens. And that's the end of the book. Can you believe we just read that big giant book? This book is called nonfiction because it's not made up. It's not a story. It's a book with information. And books like this are really interesting to read sometimes because they have wonderful pictures. And so I'd encourage you, when you go to the library, to take a look in the big section, try and find the animal books, and you can just flip through the pages and look at all the pictures and really have a fun time learning all about different kinds of animals. You don't have to get a farm book. You could get a book on monkeys, or on fish, or sharks, or dinosaurs. We're gonna... I've actually got a dinosaur book we're gonna look at, but... Yeah. Um, and if you're learning to read, you can try and read. Sometimes the captions are really hard to read. I, I'm pretty good at reading, but these had a lot of places that I'm not familiar with, and so I couldn't figure out how you're supposed to say them. Um, but it's still a neat way to learn things, and you can learn a lot about the world from books. So I thought I'd share that with you today, and I hope you really liked it.
We do hope you've enjoyed this great, amazing book show. And if you'd like to listen to further titles, please check out our other videos. Or subscribe and continue to enjoy more of these fascinating stories.